is equal to two six significant figures across the entire result, or value that's stored, and scale is concerned with number of values to the right, number of positions, of course, of the decimal point. So as an example, if you wanted to store something with a position of, let's say, eight values and a scale of maybe four, then you could use eight comma four, which means the entire value should not exceed eight values and at most four digits to the right of the decimal point. Precision for scale supports an amazing 1,000 digits of precision, which should fit pretty much all applications, and that's the American instead of the American. So if you, when deciding to define your integer or numeric to more appropriately term it columns use numeric, as opposed to small int into digits, then you will be able to take advantage of 1,000 digits of precision as a numeric, as opposed to the, the fantasy respects to small int into digits. Because it depends how precise you'd like to be. Most people probably opposite use numeric because it covers everything without having any concerns for decimal and non-decimal values. But again, there are some times where you want constraints on columns such as only decimal values should be into perhaps the product pricing or salaries or other monetary values or other numeric values that must always contain decimal fractions. Continuing within the numeric realm, we've got real, and real is 32 bits with 4 bytes wide, wide, and it's variable, so it can support a large number of values to the left of the decimal point, and to the right of the decimal point, it supports 6 decimal digits of precision. Again, in comparison to the numeric, it doesn't compare, so, but if your application will function well within 6 digits of precision, and perhaps real is a better option for you, as it's likely to use less storage. In addition, we have traditional double precision, which you'll find across the DMSs, and it's rather wider than real, much wider, 64 bits, or 8 bytes. And like the real type, it's variable in terms of the number of values to the left of the decimal but to the right it supports 15 digits of precision. So if you need more than the 6 provided by real, and less than 1,000 provided by numeric, consider either or two double precision if you need up to 6, but not as much numeric, consider real. So those are some of the number types. Let's look at some more number types. Now, when you define a column that should automatically increment, you have two options. One is serial, and serial is its name implies will apply values in a serial fashion, so one followed by two followed by three. The serial type is 32 bits wide, which can pose a problem for busy tables. 32 bits wide, when considering the signed values, really means you have 2 to the 31st on both sides. So 2 carat 31st signed, and it is auto incrementing. So if you're storing signed values, your 2 to the 31st is negative 2 billion through roughly positive 2 billion, covering roughly 4 billion values. If you need a larger auto incrementer because your table contains potentially billions of records, maybe even trillions of records that need to have a unique identifier, there's a larger counterpart serial named Big Serial. Big Serial, as you may guess, is 64 bits wide. And just like its counterpart serial, you take one bit off, and it's 2 to the 63rd. So 2 to the 63rd, which means you're getting nine extra bytes on the negative and positive side. And it's also auto incrementing. So 2 to the 63rd, 2 to the 31st, we will determine whether or not you'll be able to store the values of our interest. So serial to serial, 2 to the 31st, 2 to the 63rd, we've got double precision real, and we've got this generic numeric, which will cover pretty much everything. But when you want to have an auto incremented field, you'll use serial, but we'll serial to, to define that particular field. And invariably, you'll create tables that have an auto incremented value. Now, we could include a numeric money or label it its separate type. So money is simply referenced as a type money. And this type is rather wide, 64 bits can cover all the possible values, which means we're going to get to use 2 to the 63rd, sign of course, which means we can cover values, negative 9 EV through 9 EV. So this provides us a way of debiting and crediting, let's say, a banking system on the order of 9 exabytes negative, 9 exabytes positive. So the money type should cover all of your monetary needs, both negative and positive, because it's a rather wide 64 bits range. So these are the numeric types that are provided by ProcessQL. Again, the one that's possibly most used is numeric, because it seems to cover everything. However, to be more precise, for one of the making columns is zero to zero for money, try to use money because it'll support the insertion of monetary values using the dollar symbol, for example, fractional values such as $4.58 with a leading dollar sign will certainly be accepted in money columns. And any functions that can perform operations on monetary values will take advantage of the money type. If the money type column will be forced that data inserted into the column complies with money specifications, as opposed to taking money types into numeric fields and resulting in misrepresentation of the various amounts and formatting and losing precision and so on. Now, with respect to strings, strings are important because they allow us to store information like text. So there are a number of types that are available. Perhaps the most common type is simply the one named text. So let's put that out there. Text is a block car or a variable character field, and it is unlimited. It allows you to store as much information as you'd like within reason, of course, with respect to query optimization. This is the preferred character storage type within PostgreSQL. So you'll find that most of the text fields are defined as text because text loosely handles all the limitations found in other text type fields, including the related to car, for example. The car, with an optional n, allows us to describe a fixed length, but it's also blank padded if the value stored is less than n length. And what we mean by that is, if you define 